Hello everyone, this is Gleb and today I want to show kind of advanced topic how you can run something in parallel with a Cypress command. So Cypress commands run one by one. A command has to fully finish before the next command starts. This way you don't have randomness or flakiness but that's as supposed to execute the same sequence every time you run them. But sometimes it's okay, or well, 99% of the time it's okay, but sometimes you get into a weird edge case. So for example, in this case, when I click on the bottom, after one second delay, it shows finished. So how would you write the test that confirms it? I could do the following. I could say contains button uh, do it and I would click and then I would say contains finished. Now the site contains finished retries until the application updates and shows the element with text finished. So that's great. Notice that I executed the action before the command or an assertion that retries that checks the effect of that action. If I switch and I say wait for the finished and click the button, well, it doesn't really work because site contains looking for finished text in the document will retry and retry, but it never will appear because nobody clicked on the button because these two commands execute only after site contains finished, uh, finished in this case. So, Imagine somehow you could click on a button, right? Like a user, and then all of a sudden, Sci finished, found it. In this case, the edge case, we set up auto retries, and somehow we need to click in parallel with the Sci contains finished already running. Usually, in 99% of cases, you don't have to do it. You always set up uh, spies first, then you execute an action or you execute an action and then check the UI. But sometimes you want to start waiting for something and keep retrying and then cause the action. So here's how we can do it, bypassing Cypress command chain. We're going to go to the document. Okay, actually, we don't even have to go to the document. So why don't we find this button? Okay, and instead of clicking on it, we pass it into a callback. So anytime you get something from the application, you pass it forward in Cypress. And then we'll start waiting for the finish text. And then since it's a jQuery object, we can trigger click, I believe. Let's check it out. Notice it worked. Okay. Now we use a jQuery click. We could also trigger an event using JavaScript, but no jQuery click worked just as well. In this case, what happened? So we got the button, okay, and you can add a couple of assertions like should, you know, be visible and kind of be enabled and everything. But then this button gets right here. It's a jQuery object. And site contains runs and it doesn't start waiting yet. It queues it up and then moves to the next statement. It hasn't started retrying yet. It just queued up site contains command. And then the button trigger, click, executes. Now, this is a jQuery, it's synchronous operation, it immediately sends the click event. The site then finishes, and when Cypress knows, I can start executing commands with I in my queue. So by that time, we already clicked, right? And we start waiting for the finished text. So site contains and the jQuery trigger execute, you can think in parallel. Okay? So, that's a nice kind of thing to know. But you have to be careful because, first of all, you don't see the trigger anywhere in UI because it's not a Cypress command. Cypress doesn't know about it. So it doesn't show it right here. And another thing, we added visibility check, right? But Cypress actually executes actionability checks on the button before clicking. So, uh, for example, uh, site click versus site, uh, jQuery trigger click will be very different. Site click will try to mimic the user behavior. The action uh, has to be on a visible button, enable button. It will scroll it, make sure that it's not disabled. And jQuery trigger click just sends a click event, doesn't check anything. Okay, one last other kind of nice advanced thing. 
Anytime you have an element with an ID, let's say button or div in this case, if you look at the window object in this case, so I'm gonna go to a console and I'll switch to our application project, right? And we're gonna look at the window. Okay, that button is gone. What about output? Now notice that element automatically gets linked to the window object using the ID as a property name. So that's standard. But something we can even use inside our application instead of document get on by the ID, we can say window and then um, the property name. Well, let's see. Okay. And uh, here we can do the same thing. Uh, I think because I'm using Cypress examples and I'm rewriting some of the test suite executes, I, I forgot if I can use Windows. I think I can. Okay, yeah, window.do it, window.output. We can even do this in our code. I mean, we don't have to, but we could. So instead of getting the button, we could say, give me the window of application, it's uh, property do it, and, and then we get the button jQuery object. Um, the window.property returns HTML element, but Cypress automatically wraps those elements and makes jQuery object when it passes it from command to command. All right, so that's kind of nice to know. So I'll link this example in my Cypress examples uh, site in the description of this video.